y'all. There's a misconception out there that white people can't be both rural and progressive in this country. A few days back, I met two incredible sisters, Vera Best and Patty Anders and Patty's delightful son, Brooks. We sat down in their backyard in King, North Carolina, a small town notorious for its abundance of Confederate flags and Trump signs. But even in places like King, you'll find folks that prove that you can be both proudly rural and boldly progressive. You are from uh, Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. And uh, you referred to that in a phone conversation we had uh, as the, the upside, upside down. down. <laughs> why is it called, why is it the upside down? It's just different than anywhere else in the state. I mean, there's no phone service. The people there are real conservative. We grew up poor, but I mean, you know, it was a, it was a good community. My parents were very religious. My dad was ex-Air Force, ex-police officer, ordained minister. I spent a lot of time in a church youth group there in Sandy Ridge. And also in high school, you were the president of the Civil War Club. Yes. You got to understand, in this area, when you go to high school and you take a history class, you're taught things like Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson are heroes. It was super interesting to me. So I went to, to college at Wake Forest, um, majored in history, and started to learn real things like, um, sure, the Civil War was about states' rights to own other human beings. Glaring omission there, right? right? Have you always considered yourself to be a progressive? I've always considered myself a Democrat. I think I became a progressive once I got the internet and I was able to research things and see what was in my best interest. Looking back on 2016, I'm sure a lot of people in your community, blue collar people, for some reason identified with the business tycoon from Queens. Right. What explains that? I don't know. I watched The Apprentice. I like Donald Trump on The Apprentice, but I don't like him as the president because he's not looking after my interest. He's looking after rich people's interests. He's looking after his own interests, and he's a liar. He's not doing anything to help poor people, and he snowed all the conservatives, the Christian conservatives, that he's some kind of religious person who's going to save babies, and that's not what he's about. He's about padding his pockets. I mean, if you're really a Christian, which I feel like I am, you would care about real Christian values, not just the abortion issue. If your real issue for voting is abortion, then go and vote progressive. You would decrease abortions by creating social safety nets for women who can't afford to have that child. They're going to be more likely to keep that child if they have maternity leave that lasts six months. If they have paternal leave. Those are the kind of things that are going to decrease abortion, not outlawing it. I mean, why are you voting on this one issue of abortion when that's the only issue that you believe in on the conservative side? People would like to better themselves, but then you have Republicans that put these policies in place, like you can't get a Pell Grant if you have a drug felony, and then you wonder why people don't do better in life. Your husband, at the time, the father of your children, who has passed away since, was convicted of a felony. Yes. And that really limited the professional horizons he had in his life. Yes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. After 9-11, everywhere did background checks. So it was really hard for him to find a job. And it was just a marijuana felony. He never really had that opportunity to go to school or better himself. So he was stuck in, like, low-paying jobs. And you raised five children on his income. Yes. What was that like? <laughs> Hand to mouth a lot of the times. I mean, we were lucky. We rented a house. It was a very small house, though, for five children. Two bedrooms, one bath, but the rent was really cheap. Your son Brooks just turned 22 years old. Yes. And a lot of his friends and a lot of people his age are pretty apathetic. A lot of them say that they're not even going to vote. They think that both parties are the same. And that's what the Republicans want you to believe. They don't want people to realize that they're voting for things that affect them. If you believe everything's the same and my vote doesn't count, you're going to stay home. They don't want the youth to be energized and come out and vote them out because everything the GOP represents is what the youth is against today. Do you have much hope for the, for the future? Yeah, if everyone votes, we just need to get progressive people to actually vote. If you just get over it. Now, I don't want to vote for Joe Biden, but I'm gonna. I didn't want to vote for Hillary Clinton, but I did. You know, there's this stereotype of the Southern white male as uh, ignorant and right-wing, but can't we be progressive? 
Oh, definitely. There are friends of mine that have changed their opinions, have went from MAGA hat wearing Trump supporter to he can't be president again. So you have a metal band. I do have a metal What's band. What's the name of your band and what are you guys all about? Written in Gray. We're a four-piece melodic metalcore band from Stokes County area, Winston-Salem. We say we're from Winston-Salem because no one knows what Westfield is yeah. or what King is. And what are you guys all about? A lot of our recent album, it's called At War With Myself, is very political. We have a song called Corrode. We have a music video for it. We just took a bunch of clips of all the protests yeah. and all the police brutality that's been going around and compiled it together over the music. If we were part of the protest, then let's say. Can we talk about the opioid crisis in this area? Is that something you've dealt with personally? In a way, my father was a drug addict and I have friends that are recovering addicts and I have friends that have relapsed and it's, it's bad. I don't see the person to blame. It's a mental health issue. Crack, opioids, heroin. How prevalent is it in this community? I'd say everyone at least knows someone that is a recovering addict or is an addict. Is there room for progressive voices in rural America to emerge? I mean, I think there's all kinds of room. I think that rural America is exactly who should be progressive. Why can't we have progressive policies that put poor people to work, that pay them a good wage, that provide them health care? These are all things that poor people, rural people need. Yeah. So why they're not progressive? The can only reason I can think of for that is because they have bought into lies from people they've look up to with different values that really aren't in their best interest. What would you like to say to the people in your community that are voting for Trump because they feel like he better serves their interests? What is your interest? Think about your interest. Do you want a better paying job? Do you want health care? I mean, do you want safety nets if, God forbid, you get cancer or you lose your job? Do you want those things? Or do you just want to keep the black man and the brown man down? Do you want to continue to see families separated and babies in cages? Is that more important to you? I mean, does that speak to your heart more than policies that, you know, better your predicament in life? That's what I would say. Please, please don't put that monster in office again. That's what I would say. Are you scared about the future? I am very scared. I mean, I have a 12 and a 14 year old. It's terrifying to think that our country's going in this downward spiral where we may become fascist instead of democratic. It's terrifying. <laughs> Given your involvement with the Latinx community around here, have you dealt with fear of ICE? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, there were um, some raids in Winston-Salem, I guess it was last year, and when that happened, I mean, everyone I know, they're blowing up my phone. They're like, ice is everywhere, ice is everywhere, ice is here, ice is there. And it was just terror. Do, do you have any hope for the future that people around here might have more empathy for immigrants? I do. I can tell you that my husband, who is Mexican, he speaks very good English. Everyone around here loves him. Like anywhere I go out, people see him, they know him, they want to talk to him. I think a lot of it's just about getting to know people. There is... I think there is a barrier there with the language. A lot of people here don't speak Spanish like you and I do, Joe. A lot of them just got here and they don't speak English. And guys, like, give them a break. It's not easy to learn English. No. You're not going to learn it in six months. Es difícil aprender español. Tienes que trabajar mucho. Pues sí. Yo también estudié a Wake Forest el español. Yo veo que, aunque yo crece pobre aquí, que todavía yo tengo más privilegios que ellos. Y si yo puedo ayudarles en algo, para que también tienen a chance. Yeah. Right? Talk about a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. I'm in trouble, I suppose. Cornered and latching down doors are whole. Damn world is a storm. Don't want to hurt. No.
applause and raking around the floor. I'm on overload. Feels like I'm kind of lost in a world. Lost in a world. Isn't it kind of like being a progressive in rural North Carolina, like being lost in a whirlwind? Oh, definitely. I mean, that, that's probably what the title of our uh, recent album is getting at, at Whirlwind Myself. Us as a society, as a nation, <laughs> we're at war with ourselves, basically. It's more of a cold civil war. I mean, we got protests. Violence and all the violence in these protests is the, there's a lot of people that associate with a group called Proud Boys. They're neo Nazis. They were the ones who destroyed the civil rights movement in Greensboro during all these protests. Watched it. So it's all systemic racism. And until that's dismantled in this country, we're not going to see much change. Because that's the root of it. I think we're in a different dimension, to be honest. <laughs> I think things are just crazy right now because things are so out of hand on the national level. There's people who are upset because people are saying black lives matter. Black lives do matter. That's not an affront to your white life. And I don't know why, as a Christian person, you can't see that. So it does seem out of control right now. It feels like maybe this is how Germany felt in the 30s before Hitler took power, or right before everything got out of control there.